Hey everybody, welcome back to Space Quest 4. It's been a long time, I know. And uh, despite what the intro to this may have made you think, there is no Rachel. It is just you and me. Uh, Rachel and I spent years trying to get our schedules coordinated on a weekend where we actually felt like doing this. It wasn't going to happen. So it's you and me and Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers. I sit through these opening credits because I generally do the credits, and especially because there's some very important story here at the beginning to help the game make sense. Um, I'm sure I probably covered in the intro that I shot years ago. This game does have voice acting, but it does not have text with voice we acting. Join our friend so I. Hero, Roger Wilco, as he rockets back toward his home planet Xenon, which he hasn't seen since Space Quest 2. Having successfully rescued those two ingrates from Andromeda, he decides a pit stop on Magnetius is in order. So I'll do my best not to talk when the game is. During the descent to this cosmic canteen, he is unaware of the interest that has been generated regarding his fate. of his position, Master. Off to Magnetheus with you, then. It is time for Wilco to meet the fate which I have crafted for him. As our story begins, we find the aluminum mallard parked outside a seedy spaceport bar. Join Roger as he relates one of his greatly exaggerated tales of adventure. The aliens are only too happy to listen, as long as Roger is by. See, there is this deadly root monster, a ferocious swamp creature, and a Labion terror beast to contend with. Then I had to outsmart another of Bohal's gorillas and steal the shuttle so I could penetrate the asteroid fortress and pull the plug on that corpulent creep. What are you, Roger Wilco? Uh, yeah. Please come with me. Hello, Roger Wilco. Surprised to see an old friend? You have no idea how special this moment is for me. This is no chance encounter, I can assure you. I have this one loose end to tie up before I begin my reign as the supreme being of all that exists. I do not like to lose. You are a blemish on what would otherwise be a perfect record of domination, terror, and invincibility. Besides, I'm still a bit miffed about that asteroid deal in Space Quest 2. Anyway, to relieve the pain of my humiliation and to prevent you from being a pain in my future, you must die. It's been nice seeing you one last time. Then, do the dirty deed. Wait, they're gonna have sex with each other? Hoo yeah! Hey, Kiba! You go left and split him up. Mr. Wilco, follow me and do exactly as I say. Let's move! Come with me if you want to live. Hey, I want to know what the... Listen, I can't explain it all to you now. They've got a beat on our coordinates. We've got to move fast. 
We gotta do this fast. Shield your eyes. Jump into the time rip. Do it now. You've got to. If I take the time to explain, we're both parking lot pizza. You'll understand soon. That's the opening movie. So this is the actual opening of the game. And I will grant you, the incidental voice acting is not that great. But the narrator for this game is solid. Now where am I? You wonder aloud to non-existent auditory organs? This place sure looks homey. Hey, wait. This looks just like Xena. It is Xena. It's... it's... it's really a pile. Along with the changes induced by an armed conflict, the city looks different, more modern, with a heavy dash of post-disaster seasoning. Casually glancing at the status line, you happen to notice that you're in Space Quest 12. What's happened? Who was that guy with the overdeveloped hair dryer? Why did you let yourself be talked into jumping into some strange shimmering hole? Why are you talking to yourself? These incredibly intriguing questions will quickly be forgotten with barely an electron stirred in that well-armored orb atop your shoulders. All right, so welcome to Space Quest IV. I'm gonna save myself a game here. You're gonna see soon why I need to save the game. Just call it one. And uh, for my sake, I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit because it's really loud in my ears right now. So I really like Space Quest Four. I'm just not a huge fan of the opening sequence here. Um, randomly walking around is, for lack of a better term, a zombie. Who, you if he small, comes near frayed, you, you die. Looking length of rope. Okay. See how much of this I remember. It's been a there he is. I'm gonna die, guys. There's no there dead. He didn't even touch me. This guy walks around this area at random, and if he comes near you, game over after like a minute and a half. We're glad you could play Space Quest 4. As usual, you've been a real pant load. So, <laughs> I love Space Quest 4. I hate the beginning of Space Quest 4. So, we're going to again grab this rope. You take the small, frayed, useless-looking length of rope. Sorry about that noise and distraction. Don't mess with it. Surprisingly, no one has taken this small, innocuous looking piece of unstable ordnance. Unstable ordnance. Okay. This you is now an irritating. Have the unstable ordnance. Remember, if it I was keep your idea, good luck. 
You get points for picking it up, but if you keep it, it will just randomly blow a up and kill you. A very wise choice. Carefully placing the unstable ordnance back inside the tank, you decide some things are better left alone. So there's that. It reminds me of Leisure Suit Larry 2 with the... Uh, was it a potato? Guacamole? And if you pick it up, it goes bad and kills you later. I don't know why saving is taking so long. Alright. So, you've probably seen the Energizer Bunny running around here. We need to do something about that. Luckily, I have this rope. Don't you feel dumb standing out in plain sight while trying to trick something into your snare? Apparently that's not a good place to stand. How about here? Nope. Don't mess with it. Ah, okay, so now I'm hiding. Those sure are some oh. highly honed reactions you've got there. Perhaps you're still suffering from time lag. So apparently I was supposed to react and I did not. I thought Roger could capture this thing on its own. It just keeps going. That was without a doubt one of the finest examples of bunny snatching I've ever seen. The stress placed on the rope during the bunny snatching was too much. You cast the useless fibers aside. You extract Aha. the portable power pellet from the back of the bunny's polyplastoid torso. Alright, I believe I have everything I need here on the surface. I can now get away from the randomly roving zombie. After the hour and a half it's going to take to save the game. It's an empty jar with a lid, neither of which does anything entertaining. It's a thing, I must pick it up. You take the jar into custody. It's just an average old-fashioned desk blotter. Ah, a button. Perhaps I'll give it a press. Data entry 22795. This message is to whomever may be so fortunate as to find it. I am Professor Lloyd, lead designer of the Xenon Supercomputer Project, the ultimate in artificial intelligence. The computer was designed to enhance our lives, but instead ended up being the ruin of us all. We made the mistake of tying it into the most important facets of our existence here on Xenon, including our weather control and defense systems. It seemed like a sound idea at the time, and all proceeded well for about three years. It was around then that a deep space salvage operation recovered what appeared to be some sort of antiquated data storage unit contained in a flimsy cardboard box on which the words Leisure Suit Larry were imprinted. On its oh back God. was the picture of a not particularly wholesome gentleman, but that's another story. My counterparts exhibited shameful behavior as they tore open the box to get at its contents. I could not understand the commotion it generated. The data was uploaded into the supercomputer for analysis. As a result, a crippling virus spread through the machine like a bad social disease. All control of the computer was lost. All screens went blank. Then these words were displayed by the monitors and uttered by the vocal outputs. Wilco must pay. From that day forth, the possessed computer waged war on the inhabitants of Xenon, using our own weapons against us. 
Some managed to escape to other planets. Those of us who remained stayed to fight the machines and robots under its control. It was a bloody war. Those of us that were not killed were taken captive and modified. These cyborgs infiltrated the loyal ranks of resistance, rooting out almost all of our hiding places and exposing us to the mechanical menace. Some of these poor souls still wander the streets. As of this recording, we are down to only a handful of rebels. My health is deteriorating rapidly. To make matters worse, I've just learned that the computer has unraveled the mysteries of time travel. I've sent my two best men to attempt to steal this new technology. If you are not a machine, then perhaps they were successful. Please realize, you are Xenon's last hope. Time for the janitor to save the day again. So there's our plot info dump. And I'm going to save because there's another bad part coming up here. Where I'm probably going to die multiple times trying to do the thing I know I'm supposed to do. Leisure Suit Larry ended the world and nobody was surprised. So there's going to be some killer green sludge here. Oh no! The door has shut and there's no way back. What are you going to do now? Probably die. Gonna turn the speed down a little bit for this part. Who would ever want to play the game at this speed? Look at this. Okay, so where's the killer slime? Casually mosey. There it is. It will kill me if it touches me. And I have to collect some of it in this jar. Either you or the slime will have to be in a different position. See? And that's it. Missed my opportunity. I was too far away from the slime. So, we have to try it again. Oh no! The door has shut and there's no way back. What are you going to do now? I'm going to slow the game down and save. If it touches me, instant death. And going as quick as I could, it almost touched me. Okay. You scoop up the Got slimy it. secretion. Better get away now before it scoops you up. It's not going to scoop me up. It's already going past. Because I am Roger Tutu Maker Wilco. I just got to find my ladder out of here. Haha! <laughs> I can't believe I remembered that.
I'm gonna go take that ship. This seems to be a relatively spacious landing gear compartment. Wonder how cramped it gets in there when the gear is stowed. What, no comical image of him crammed in there? I just remembered something I should have prepared before the stream started, or before the recording started. So this first episode's going to end pretty soon here. We're doing good, guys. We have snuck into the enemy base. Now we just destroy the bad guy and end the game. sector of Space Quest 2. No sign of presence at this time. Drrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr